Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. This is a named reaction episode, and we'll be talking about the Bayless-Hillman reaction. This is a very important carbon-carbon bond forming reaction that appears in a number of synthetic contexts. Also called the Morita Bayless-Hillman reaction, or the MBH reaction, this reaction functionalizes enoates at the alpha position using carbonyl or imine electrophiles as reaction partners. We frequently see DABCO being employed as an organocatalyst for this reaction. One of the traditional difficulties in this transformation, however, is the reaction time, which is known to sometimes last days or even a week. The mechanism of this reaction begins with activation of the enoate by the nucleophilic organocatalyst, either an amine or a phosphine generally, to produce an enolate, which can attack the carbonyl electrophile. There can subsequently be a reformation of the enolate using the amine as a base, which ultimately results in the elimination to release the catalyst. Finally, protonation of the alkoxide results in formation of the product. Before checking out some synthetic applications, I want to pause for a second and take a look at a related transformation, the rahout courier reaction. This can be considered essentially a vinyligous variant of the Bayless-Hillman reaction, where instead of using a carbonyl or an imine as the electrophile, we're using a Michael acceptor. As a quick intramolecular example of this reaction, it's been shown that this type of substrate bearing an enone and an enoate can undergo a rahout courier reaction to cyclize under the action of trimethylphosphine. This is proceeding under the same mechanism we looked at before, where the phosphine is activating the pronucleophile, which in this case is predominantly the enone, although the enoate can also be activated to a much lesser degree in this system. Now let's return to the Bayless-Hillman reaction and check out some synthetic applications. In this first example from the Edo group, the substrate bearing an enone and an aldehyde was utilized in combination with stoichiometric triphenylphosphine to carry out an intramolecular Bayless-Hillman reaction, which resulted in the cyclic allylic alcohol product. That product was able to be carried on to complete the total synthesis of aplanatomol B. Thinking about how the type of activation that we see in the Bayless-Hillman reaction could be applied in combination with a palladium pi allyl electrophile, the Crochet group found that it was possible to carry out a Bayless-Hillman suji trost reaction to furnish this type of cyclized papyridine product. This was possible by simultaneously activating the enone using trimethylphosphine to do Bayless-Hillman type activation, while the allylic carbonate could be activated as the palladium pi allyl electrophile. Then, cyclization of the enolate onto the pi allyl electrophile resulted in the product shown, which could be carried on to complete the total synthesis of 7-hydroxyquinine, as well as the formal synthesis of quinine. In this next application, I want to look more at the chemistry of racemic Bayless-Hillman adducts. In their total synthesis of furoquinosin E, the trust group showed that these types of adducts can be engaged in a dynamic kinetic asymmetric transformation, or DICAT, by using palladium-0, a trost ligand, and this kind of iodoresorcinol nucleophile to generate this type of diastereo and enantioenriched product. Then, by using a reductive Heck reaction, they were able to cyclize and form a five-membered ring on one side, while the free phenol which was released on the other side during the reaction could be protected as the acetate. This product, bearing two adjacent stereocenters with good enantioenrichment, could be further enantioenriched upon recrystallization. Then they could carry on this intermediate to complete the total synthesis of furoquinosin E. Finally, I want to take a look at a synthetic application with the rahout courier reaction, which is pretty interesting. In this total synthesis by the Hahn group, the starting material could be dimerized by treatment with tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, and the secondary alcohols could be subsequently protected using acetic anhydride. The way this rahout courier reaction was proposed to occur is by first carrying out an oxymichael addition of one molecule of substrate to another. This resulted in an enolate that could be used in a michael addition. Then, proton transfer could allow the regeneration of the original enolate, which would allow an elimination step to occur to give the free secondary alkoxide, which could be protonated to generate the product. The dimeric product of this rahout courier reaction was then successfully elaborated into the alkaloid target phlegenine C. And we'll end it there. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this named reaction episode. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. And see you next time.